Before we start on our journey of exploring the origins of the French press, we need to open the black box surrounding the origins of the beanie liquid itself, coffee. Let's zoom in to the 15th century trade sphere. This is the Arabian Peninsula. Here in the Yemeni district, coffee was first cultivated. Here, farmers harvested the sweet berries for their nectar. This farming trend soon expanding into Persia, Syria, Egypt, and Turkey, allowing coffee to be widely known in this region. Yet it wasn't until the 16th century when the juices of these berries were soon called the bitter invention of Satan. The local clergy in Venice condemned coffee drinking, illustrating the first clash of cultural and spiritual ritual. This dissonance in thought provoked Pope Clement VIII to intervene. His intervention would provide a religious figure's decision in either approving or disapproving nope. coffee consumption in his territory. This coffee mm, is very, very good. I give I, the Pope, Pope, Pope stamp, stamp of approval. approval. Mm. Shocking to most, Pope Clement decided that upon trying coffee, he would give it the papal approval Yay! and sparked the cropping up of coffee houses around Europe. Coffee houses became the hubs of social activities and communication in cities like Austria, Germany, Holland, England, and France. The notion that coffee sparked such stimulating conversation was a direct contribution to productivity, a counter to traditional methods of consuming alcohol in the morning. With a new form of sociability and an ability to be productive rather than a small buzz of alcohol to get you going, these individuals were able to become better members of society. This trend also had explicit correlations to the Enlightenment era, an era in the 18th century that provoked people to have deep conversations about deep religious or political topics in coffee houses. These coffee houses became so popular as a means of social networking that they threatened traditional power hierarchies, and as such, Charles II threatened to shut down all coffee houses. He received such backlash that he had to back down from his stance. There was a boom in production of various types of coffee pots in the 18th century. This is a French coffee pot made in 1757. Typically, coffee houses and the middle class would use copper pots, but wealthy coffee drinkers had them made in silver and were intricately decorated. The characteristics of French Rococo includes exceptional artistry and complexity in designs, and often incorporated the use of vegetable forms. Jean-Baptiste de Beloy created the first drip coffee pot in 1800, and the creation of the silver metal pot marked the transition of coffee pots as containers to actually prepare coffee. They were previously only a serving vessel decorated as art pieces to show wealth. The French press has gone through many design modifications. The first coffee press used a metal or cheesecloth screen fitted to a rod that coffee drinkers would press into a mix of hot water and coffee grounds. Although there are many forms of coffee making today, the French press is portable and more self-contained than other types of coffee makers. It allows users to bring the feel of a coffee house into their own homes. Avid coffee drinkers swear by the French press as making the best cup of coffee. It is the best form of coffee making to preserve the full-bodied nature of the coffee, meaning that all of the robust oils and natural taste of the beans are tasted by the brewer. With the French press, users can make a cup of coffee tailored to their individual taste. As we can see from the transition from the Rococo silver coffee holder to the drip coffee pot to the French press, innovation is not always about the future. Although there has been a spark of new high-tech coffee makers, such as the Keurig or various types of programmable coffee makers that can be controlled from your smartphone, this does not mean that they are brewing better coffee. Something as simple as the French press made in 1929 is constantly being refined and developed into a product that has built upon what was previously made. If we did not have the French press, the culture of coffee drinking outside of coffee shops would not exist. 
With something as portable and easy to use as the French press, we are able to bring thoughtful conversation and discussion into the comfort of our own homes. There are even travel mug versions of the French press marketed to hikers or people who are simply on the go and do not wish to carry a large, heavy metal percolator or use a filter using drip brew coffee. <laughs> Without the history of coffee drinking, the French press would not exist. And by opening the black box to understand the history of coffee, we gain perspective on the need for an artifact like the French press. We learn that innovation is not necessarily always about the future, and the newer, more high-tech inventions of coffee makers are not better than the more simple ones. If we did not have an artifact like the French press, we could not enjoy coffee in the way that we do today.